Hi gang. So in this video, I am going to be doing another makeup tag. And I first saw this tag on Teresa Is Dead's channel. I'll link her channel down below. She's a little bit more X-rated than I am. Um, but I find her very entertaining and I like her sense of humor. So yeah, she also did mention that the creator of this tag is called Seeking Alexandria. I'll also link her channel down below. Um, I haven't watched Seeking Alexandria before, but I'm interested to check out her videos. Okay, so this tag is called the Makeup Marvels Makeup Tag. And I will be creating a look with the products that I am going to talk about. Um, because I usually feel very awkward if I'm just answering questions without putting stuff on my face. <laughs> yeah, I've also rearranged the questions a little bit so that it would make more sense for my makeup application routine. These are in a different order than it was originally um, intended. Okay, so here we go. Uh, the first question is Lady Prime. What is a primer that actually works? So I don't use face primer. If I do have an issue with my skin and I want a smoother base, I typically will go in with just a moisturizer. And this is my favorite moisturizer. This is the Clinique Dramatically Different Moisturizing Gel. I just find this moisturizer to be really great. Okay. So the next primer that I will talk about is the eyeshadow primer and this has been my staple eyeshadow primer for years. Uh, this is the Urban Decay eyeshadow primer potion in the original uh, shade <clears throat> and this one is a little bit more translucent than some of the others that you can get for, for instance the Eden primer. I do my foundation or concealing after I do my eyeshadow. With the Eden Primer, it makes it more difficult for me to blend around the uh, nose area. So the next question, I switched it around. The Game Changer, a product that literally changed how you do your makeup a part of your routine. So I will definitely have to say makeup brushes. These are the brushes that I really enjoy. Um, this is from Isam. And I first got this particular brush, Isam, uh, free with purchase when I ordered from Muse Beauty Pro. And this is the S33. And I didn't think much of it um, until I actually tried it on my eye and I was very, very pleasantly surprised. I really like the, these brushes. Um, I picked up a few more. These two. I picked up these two. These are kind of like the same bristles as the S33 but just bigger and smaller and with a pointy tip here. And then this is a vegan one, this is synthetic. And I also do enjoy uh, Smith brushes. Some of the Smith brushes that I enjoy the most are this one. This is the 203 brush. This is the micro angled brush I think it's called. And the reason why I like it, it's so, like it so much is because my eyes are quite small and if I want to do a winged liner or a liner in general, um, this is a lot more precise and very sturdy. This one kind of keeps its shape better. Uh, these two Smith brushes, this, these are the, I can't remember what they're called, Arrowhead or something like that. 256 and 253. Um, I've recently been using them to blend out cream products as well. Because I do like to spot conceal, I prefer to spot conceal usually. So that those are brushes that I like and these brushes as well. Um, this is the Zoeva 110 face shape. I use this to buff in foundation, buff in cream blusher, things like that. Same with these two. This one is the uh, 102 silk finish. It's pretty much this brush but bigger. And this one is a more recent purchase. This is the 146 Concealer Perfector. And yeah, it's just got this unique shape and I've been testing it out and I kind of like it. Ripe and hype. Makeup that was actually worth it slash worth the hype. So I will definitely have to say the Melt Cosmetics um, Matte Eyeshadows. And this one is just one of the palettes that I have. This is the Morte. Uh, palette and I love their matte eyeshadows. They are so, they are so wonderful. 
I know that some people have said that with certain uh, melt eyeshadow palettes, it can be a bit hit and miss. I find that with the matte eyeshadow formula, I usually don't have any issues. For example, this is the Gemini. I think I first heard of this palette from Teresa Estet. So far, the melt uh, palettes that I own, I enjoy the formula. I don't like the shimmer shades that much. Um, but the matte formula is really, really bomb. Let's start playing with the eyeshadow. I want to put stuff on my face. Okay. You know what? I feel like going into this pink. I'm just in that mood. I'm going in with this pink from the Radioactive palette. And the shade is Radioactive. <laughs> Let's go into that one. The next question will also tie into my makeup look and that is called the Late Bloomer, a product you wanted to try and then wish you would have tried it sooner. Uh, that is the uh, Nabla eyeshadows. I did see them on Beauty Bay but I wasn't that intrigued when I you know, got some of the shades. I was really impressed with the formula, especially the shades Selfish, Water Dream, um, Alchemy and Absinthe and blue velvet i love that shade it is really stunning i think i want to use one of these shades um in the inner corner of the eye i think the one that's really catching my attention is sweet tooth I wonder if that would match. I think it would. I think it would look nice. And this one is from the Smoke Sessions palette by Melt as well. So this one is the shimmer formula that I don't mind as much. But the ones, the shimmers from the Gemini palette are... No. <laughs> They're not good at all. Ooh, see, look, 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 look. <laughs> I've been doing this to Ellie, like, a lot recently. I... I call her name like a child. Ellie. 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 <laughs> oh, that is pretty. Look at that. Just look at that. It's almost too dark for the pink. I will have to deepen up the pink with something else, I guess. Let's switch to the Nabla eyeshadows that I have. Let's see, I'm, I'm going to deepen up this pink with this red shade right here. Let's see how that goes. And this one is called Fahrenheit, I think. Yeah, it is. Maybe I should pat like a shimmer in the middle of the eye to kind of blend the red with the green a bit better. Let me see. What shade can I use? I think Absinthe would be great for this. Is this Absinthe? Yeah, Absinthe. This is also another Nabla shade. And that's because it shifts from red to kind of like a green, if you can see. Pop, pop, pop. So that would be good. Let's do that. Oh yeah, we're getting there. Look at that. That's a lot better of a transition. The bottom lash line needs some doing. So I'm going to take some shades from the Morte palette because I really like that. And I'm going to go in with the shade Sangri, 
I think that's how you pronounce it. This one right here. Okay. So in the inner corner, I think I want to go in with that same absent shade from Nabla. Okay, so for the inner corner, I think I will pick up that shade from the Smoke Sessions, which is Blue Dream, the one right next to Sweet Tooth. So I noticed that this um, this light shade from the Smoke Sessions, the Blue Dream shade, is a little bit more crumbly than Sweet Tooth. Um, which is kind of like that texture of the shimmers in the Gemini palette. Not as bad, but still. So I'm going to take that shade Zoe on the brush and I'm going to... Oh, okay. We are shiny today. I kind of want to deepen up the lash line a little bit. Uh, I'm going to take the shade Valero. Oh, 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 yeah, right here. I'm going to kind of like pack that on the lash line. And that kind of brings, gives me like a liner effect. So I think I'm going to keep it like this and then I'm going to blend out the edge of the colorful eyeshadow, the red, uh, with a basic kind of shade like this. So I'm going to take the pinker tones. So that's, that was a pretty immediate blend. <laughs> And so for the inner corner, which is the green, I'm kind of mixing these two shades instead of this and this. It's like green and yellow, I guess, a little bit closer. On the color wheel, at least. Okay. So now that we've got that down, I'm going to clean off the biggest fluffy brush. I'm going to try to just go over the edges once more just to blend it a little bit. So the next question is tentative tingles. Palette you were on the fence about but now are obsessed with. And this is not going to be an eyeshadow palette. Um, this is going to be a kind of cream product palette and this is the House of Glam Dolls Glam Lift Wheel. I was a little bit intrigued but wasn't that sure and I didn't know if I was going to like it but I really really enjoy this. I've been using it pretty much ever since I've gotten it. Grab some of that product and go into my under eyes. So I use this I mix some of the shades together kind of to give um, a better coverage for certain areas of my face. For example, the under eye circles. I use more of a peachy kind of tone and then for the redness around my nose and stuff, I use this tone more. Um, this will probably not work for you if you are of a darker complexion. I really don't know because I don't have that skin tone and I can't say if it would work. Because these shades, they come out very orange on the skin. Um, let me just show you. 
Uh, let me just show you. I tried to use them as bronzer, but that didn't work. It is very, very orange. If you look at that there, very, very orange. So I really don't know what kind of skin tone that would match. Um, darker skin tones. I think it's a bit too orange. But I suppose you could use it to color correct darker skin tones. And this is the intention of the Glam Lift wheel. But I've been just using it as kind of like a concealer foundation color corrector all rolled into one. Um, and I also don't put it all over my face anyway, so. Just the, just the areas that I have a bit more of um, discoloration around the mouth, around the nose, around the eyes. And then I kind of just leave the rest of my skin bare. I've got a huge pimple right here. <laughs> it's one of those like painful pimples that don't go away for a while. I've also been sneezing a lot lately and I think it has something to do with the pollen. This morning I woke up sneezing and I couldn't get my nose to stop leaking and I couldn't get back to sleep because it was just, it was leaking endlessly and I didn't know what to do so I just stayed up for a bit until my nose settled down but when I went back into the bedroom my nose started leaking again I was like why this is so annoying so yeah okay so that's where I usually put my um, concealing stuff so the next question I have is the anti-cake, a powder that sets without being all kind of doughy, nasty on your face. I had the Becca Be A Light palette and that seemed to work very well for me. Unfortunately, I decluttered it because I'm an idiot. <laughs> because I got the um, I got the Hourglass Ambient Light Trio palette or something and I thought this would be a good replacement for the Becca Be A Light and actually I think I preferred the Be A Light. Unfortunately it's no longer available and I decluttered mine so yeah. The one that I actually would use nowadays is um, I deposited them. This is from the Kat Von D shade and contour palette I believe. I broke one of the shades. Ali so kindly bought me this, extra, uh, this replacement shade. This is in the shade Levitation. If I mix them all together, I can get kind of like a nice um, setting powder kind of kind of situation going on. There you go. See? And yeah. So these I enjoy the formula of. Another one that I also use is actually from Jeffree Star. Um, this is not a palette that you can get from Jeffree Star. These are just depotted shades from various palettes and I kind of like took out some of the shades that I thought were great blending shades. I find his matte eyeshadows just the perfect formula to blend out the harsh edges of my eyeshadow. Those are two uh, controversial brands at the moment but I have them so I'm, I'm still gonna use them. That is what I would use to set my face if I um, felt like setting my face. I recently got this one. This is the Bourjois Healthy Mix Powder. I I really like the scent of this. It smells like fresh and fruity, which is quite odd for a powder, and that's why I like it so much. Okay, the next question. Lash, Lady Lash, mascara that actually looks like a, a bitch on the box. I'm not really sure what that means. What is a bitch on a box? But I just assume uh, it's a, a good lash product, right? A good mascara. So my favorite is uh, the Heroin Mink Volume and Curl Mascara Advanced Film Waterproof. It's a very long name. It's a Japanese brand and the reason why I like this so much is because my lashes are very straight and they go downward and they're very stubborn. So in Singapore, uh, the weather is very humid. I had so much problems uh, trying to get my lashes to stay curled after curling them with an eyelash curler. My lashes eventually kind of just straighten themselves out. Over here in Germany, I guess it's drier and it's obviously cooler 
um, most of the year. So I don't have as much problem with mascara, but when I am in Singapore, this is definitely the one that I would use because it keeps my lashes up. And I haven't really tried any other mascara that did it as well as this, especially in that particular climate. Um, Ali recently sent this in our makeup swap. Yeah. Um, oh, oh, good news on that. She actually got her box and she unboxed it and everything was fine. Nothing was broken. I was, I was so, so, so happy. She sent me this, the CoverGirl Exhibitionist Hydro Fudge Walk very black and i actually like this a little bit better than the heroin made for the volume um and i think it's also because of the weather conditions here and i will reiterate that i guess they're very kind of lash specific this is not gonna do it for you if you want like crazy volume and create that false lash effect what i want to address it's about uh, creating a hole for my very straight thin lashes. I noticed this when um, I recommended this mascara, the heroin made to Lauren Luke, who is Panacea 81, and I gifted her one of these. It didn't give her as much volume as the one that she loves, which is the NYX On The Rise Volume Mascara. But on me, when I put this one on, my lashes just fall within five minutes it it really doesn't hold at all um the next question is shine and dime gloss that's shiny without the fly paper effect okay so for me i don't really like wearing glosses my hair constantly falls in front of my face like that and it always gets onto my lips i mean some for some glosses it's worse than others but whichever gloss i use there will be gloss residue on my hair strands and that's why I don't like to wear gloss. I do like the Dose of Colors lip glosses in the various shades. They do have a very nice pigmented uh, formula so it does show up as a opaque color on your lips. Yeah, this is the shade on repeat. Gloss is nice but it never really lasts long on me because I eventually just eat it off. See, that's a very opaque color for a gloss, isn't it? See, the gloss is in my hair already. I'm gonna add some of that pink shade. There we go, that ties it better. Definitely. I think that is what was missing from the look. Like the lash line. Okay. Yes, this definitely looks better. Okay, so this is the finished look. I hope you enjoyed. It is very, very colorful. Yesterday, I did a very natural, understated look. And I think I was just, well, now I really need to play with color. And, that I, and I went all out with the color. So I hope you enjoyed. I hope you thought this was fun. Um, yeah, so if you want to do the tag, do the tag. I'll link the information down below. I'll credit um, Seeking Alexandria who started this makeup tag. Thanks very much, Seeking Alexandria. I look forward to watching her videos. And yeah, I also tag Ali in this makeup tag. So 
That's it for me. Ciao for now. I hope you enjoyed.